Yeah. Hello, it's Jeremy. Okay, come on up, third floor. Hi. Sorry I'm so terribly late. You have trouble finding it? A bit. I went to uptown when I thought I was going downtown and uh, still don't know my way around. Just moved here? September 7th. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Well, it can only get better, right? <laughs> and this is the bedroom. So, you're here for work? I'm assisting the concierge at the St. Regis Hotel. Very classy. And you said it was non-smoking, is that right? Yeah. Technically, I, I quit this summer. I see. It's just, uh, my friend was over, uh, my neighbor, my smoking neighbor, always, you know, smoking up the joints. May I ask how long you've been here? Uh, uh sure. Let me see, about nine years? Wow. Nine years, almost ten. You must like it very much, then. I got the place when I was in school, and it was dirt cheap, and so I just kind of stayed. And, uh, flatmates moved out? Uh, yeah. He's gone. <clears throat> got his stuff out yesterday, most of it. My ex is coming to get this. And that was your flatmate? No, no, the ex wasn't the flatmate. <laughs> Kind of why he's the ex. <laughs> Pardon? Wanted me to move in with him. Ah. So, have you seen many apartments? Actually, this is the first. Wow, you were the first to call. <laughs> well, that's absolutely ghoulish. Ghoulish? Um, morbid. Well, you know. Sure. I just don't hear the word very often. Ghoulish. Well, when I left that message, I was at my wit's end. You see, I've been living at the St. Regis since I arrived. Doesn't sound so bad. Oh, one would think. Except when you're being shuffled about to a different hotel room every night, it can be somewhat disconcerting. All the guests were stuck at the hotel. The staff couldn't get home because of all the transportation issues. So, they decided to lodge us in the ballroom on the night of the 11th on cots. Oh, and that was my last straw. So, you know, when I called you, I was just... You don't have to apologize. I don't think calling about the ad was... What's that word? Gooish? <laughs> nice view. Could you see them from here? Oh, yeah. Right at the end of the street, huge. But you weren't here when they... Saw the whole thing out the window. Oh, God, that must have been horrific. You know, uh... Yeah. How far from the... I, I don't know, uh, uh, 12 blocks, maybe? Well, was there any, um... No. Strangely enough, the wind... We must have that stuff towards Brooklyn. Oh, Brooklyn. So how should we proceed then? Well, I'm planning to decide by Friday, but sooner would be better. I like it a lot, but um, it, it is the first place I've seen. Well, so. why don't you give me a call tomorrow if you're interested and we can take it from there? Splendid. Uh, and I'll ring you either way. I don't want to leave you guessing. Wow, that's nice. It's the only proper thing to do. Not if you live in New York. Oh, now when I get downstairs, how do I find Uptown? Oh, uh, when you go out the front door, so you don't get lost, if you look for the Empire State Building, that's uptown, and downtown is, well, not right. Well, I'll ring you soon. <clears throat> mm. 
Cheerio. Hey, Will here. You left a bunch of clothes from when you were staying out here last week, and against my better judgment, I washed them for you. Anyway, let me know when I can stop by your place and drop them off. Oh, um, as for that dresser, I don't know if uh, I really hello. want it. Hello, uh, this is Lorenzo. Give me a ring and, I uh, see oh, in the voice, and I'm sorry I don't call sooner, but Bye. after the bombing and all that, uh, uh, I forget. Uh, so, is something I like very much, but maybe uh, too expensive. Uh, can we make it less money? I'm trying to say hey, now up? that everything is so bad. My about the uh, roommate uh, situation. Uh, I saw your ad in the Village Voice. Um, <laughs> I know, I know things are kind of crazy right now, but call me when you can. Thanks, man, and peace. Wow. Hey, this place is awesome. Really? Yeah, it's great. Nice big space, windows, light. So you're a smoker then? Oh, yeah, is that a problem? Actually, I'm trying to quit. <laughs> me too. Whoa, what's that line uh, from Airplane, Lloyd Bridges says? Uh, I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. Yeah, 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 yeah. I picked the wrong month to quit smoking. So, uh, how's the noise? Uh, you know, New York. It's loud, but you get used to it. That's cool. I'm a New Yorker, man. I'm used to it. Yeah. So, where are you living now? Nowhere. I've just been going from couch to couch. Y you have a job then? Shit, yeah. What do you think? Some kind of bum? No. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, no, no. I, I, I got a great job. I, uh, I manage a uh, trucking company over in Jersey City. Yeah, it's my uncle's business. I've been uh, running it for him since the beginning of the year. It's a great fucking job. But uh, you know, these days, I just I don't have a place to rest my weary ass. Quitting's going well, huh? So, uh, you don't have an apartment right now? Uh, my, uh, place was down in Battery Park City. Oh. I shouldn't say was, and it's still there. They just won't let us in yet. They said all the units are covered in dust. This layer of toxic crap on everything. Were you there when it happened? No, thank God. I would've fucking freaked out. I mean, not that I didn't freak out, but I mean, you know, I would've lost my shit if I was there. It's two blocks away. Fuck. So you'd already left for work? No, 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 no. I was in Jersey City uh, Monday night to meet this chick for a date. Oh. Um, are you gay? Uh, yeah, but I... The ad didn't come out and say it. I could read between the lines. You know, clean, quiet, responsible. Six male, gay. <laughs> well, uh, gay is charged. <laughs> gay is charged, that's a good one. So, you are having this date? Yeah, I met this chick Saturday night at the pool hall up on 19th. So, uh, we made plans to meet up at the mall in Jersey City that Monday. How romantic. Yeah, I grew up in the burbs. I'm kind of nostalgic for the mall scene. So, we, uh... We met up at the food court. We got a couple sandwiches at Arby's. Strolled around a little bit. Headed back to her place in JC. Sounds like a pretty successful first day. Shit, yeah, this chick was hot, bro. Do you do that a lot? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not into lots of one night things. Usually. It's cool to have guests every now and then, though, right? Oh, yeah, sure. Because I, I do like to have guests. A few, you know. At least two every weekend. One Friday, one Saturday. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, yeah. So, you were at this chick's place when everything happened? And we woke up and had sex a couple of times. It was so hot, man. She had these amazing tits that were like... Man. So, she gets out of bed, she turns the TV on, and they're saying that some plane hit the World Trade Center. I'm thinking, you know, like a prop plane or something. That's what everyone thought. Right. And she's convinced it's like a bigger plane because of all the smoke. But I'm like, how the fuck could a serious-sized plane with commercial pilots make that kind of mistake? The sky was crystal clear, right? So my theory was that it was some drunk in a prop plane. So we're arguing about it when, bam, right there on the TV, the other plane hits. Right there, bam. 
like an answer to our argument, right? So then I start freaking out about my apartment building. So we get some clothes on, we go down to the waterfront, we're there for like, I don't know, 10 minutes when we saw the first one come down. That was fucking insane. I'm standing there looking at my apartment building as this huge gray cloud swallows it. The place just disappeared. For a minute there, I thought it was gone, you know? Just crushed or something. I was sort of losing it, you know? Just thinking, man, there goes everything. <clears throat> so, uh, what do you think of the place? Do you like it? Yeah, sure. Uh, as long as we can get along. Let's see. Uh, are drugs a problem? What? I smoke pot sometimes. Is that cool? Oh, uh, yeah. Cool, cool. I mean, sometimes I like to do a little coke, you know? Some crystal. Smack. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're a real kidder, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. But, seriously, the pot's cool, though, right? Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> I mean, you can have some, too, if you want. It makes me paranoid, which I definitely don't need these days. That's cool. That's understandable. <clears throat> I just I like being friends with people, you know? I figure if I'm going to have a roommate, I, I, sh I should be friends with them, hang out. You, know, you like to hang out? Well, my schedule can be pretty busy sometimes, so... Relax. I don't mean, like, every night, man. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure, that would be cool. Cool. We'll get along then. So how am I doing? Huh? I, I think this is going good. I mean, we, we can get along, right? Uh, I guess. I like to uh, get along with people, you know? It's a necessity in this city. You know? And now with all that's going on, it's really important. I mean, we're fucking poor, man, mm -hmm. you know? So when you come home, you gotta be able to have some peace. You know what I'm saying? I mean, fuck, people are dead out there, man. Thousands of them right there on my fucking doorstep. I mean, that's some intense shit, man. Hello? Yes. Oh, hi, Warren. Yes, I remember. Uh, I'm showing it, I'm showing it today. 10 minutes, okay. Sounds good. I'll see you then. I'm sorry, I got someone else coming over. Boy, you're just bringing them in and kicking them out, huh? Uh... Just kidding, just kidding. So, uh, um, can you call tomorrow? Sure. Fucking Osama, at least we're gonna kick his ass now, man. You think they'll actually get him? If they do, I wanna be the first one in line to fucking kick him in the balls. Well, peace. Yeah. Peace. Buenos dias. It's your favorite landlord calling for my formerly favorite tenant. What's up with the rent, amigo? It's going on two weeks, man. A roommate or no, I got bills to pay. They call me. Hey, uh, this me is Victor. Thanks for showing me your place yesterday. Unfortunately, I did find somewhere a little more reasonable, but good luck. I'm sure you will find someone. I mean, it is a great Hello, location. Hello, bonjour, this is Charles. So, um, take care. Thank you, call because uh, I'm looking for a place to live in uh, November, and I know that it's very hard to find a place in New York, so I'm starting to, to look, look now while I'm staying at France, and I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you, merci, au revoir. Delivery! I can't believe it's still smoking. They're nowhere near putting it all out. What? Time said it could be at least another month or so, maybe longer. Jesus. What are you doing? Don't you think you're overreacting a bit? No. It's fine. They've been testing. It doesn't smell fine. But it's not going to kill you. Look, uptown girl, I'm breathing this stuff every day, 24-7. On top of that, the smell is awful. So technically, even if it's not toxic, the smell alone is enough to make me gag and then choke to death on the takeout. And then would you think I was overreacting to the air quality deal? 
That was a bit of a rant. You asked about the mask, I gave you an answer. Definitely a rant. Did you call that 800 number yet? It was busy. Did you try again? And it was busy for a reason. There are thousands of other people much worse off than me because they really need help. Eric, you went through a major traumatic- Food's getting cold. The point is, you gave it a shot. You guys were together for almost two years, and you learned a lot. A nice test run. Test run? If Will could hear you say and that... And now you're ready for the real thing. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I remember having a conversation with you in July when you said that Will was the real thing. What can I say? He was until he wasn't. Have you thought about starting an advice column? Oh, this is so you, Eric, to be arguing over the past. Oh. I mean, it's over, okay? Will is in the past, gone. It's a whole new world now. Yeah, ergo the mask. I'm talking about you here. I know. Really? I know. Good. Now, pass me a spring roll. What are you doing? Quitting smoking next year. Eric! It's my first one today. You said you were eating! I will! Just after this. Great. Can you open the window at least? Are you kidding? No, you're smoking and I'm trying to eat. The air's awful today. Then open the window and put your mask on. I can't smoke with my mask on. Okay, you realize how absurd this is getting. I'll open it a crack. Oh, good Jesus. God! Jesus! Shut it! <coughs> the wind shifted. That smell. So, how's the hubby? Okay. Just okay? <laughs> Not the usual ringing endorsement of married life? I guess we're sort of fighting now. Really? About what? We went out for the first time last weekend to a dinner party over at Lisa's. Something she originally scheduled for the week of the 11th. Ugh, how was that? At first, it was great. Everyone was so excited to see everyone. None of us live or work anywhere downtown, so it's not like any of us were in danger, but everyone was being so grateful. On the Upper East Side, even. Lisa even got teary when we arrived. Oh, that is so touching. Eric, she was genuinely emotional about it, and not just her. Everyone was being so sincere and thoughtful and interested in what you had to say. It was kind of freaking me out. But once we had some drinks and settled into dinner, it got a little more back to normal. It's when David and I got into a major fight. Over what? He started telling my story. Again? I told him it was sort of funny once, but not over and over, and especially not at someone else's dinner party. But he just thinks it's hysterical that I went and got my hair done after the second plane hit. Fucking hysterical. I mean, it's not that ridiculous, right? I went to vote after the second plane. See? People were going about their business. I mean, we all knew it was serious, but I remember thinking, sure, it's this enormous fire, but they'll put it out. And then I went to the deli, got a bagel and a Diet Coke. But David just thinks it's the most hysterical fucking joke. The nation's under attack, and Josie needs her roots touched up butt on. It's totally not fair. Fucking right it's not. I mean, I made that appointment two months ago. Do you know how hard it is to see Jean-Luc? Okay, that might not be helping your case. Anyway, when he got home, I just let that fucker have it. I told him he had no right to tell that story again and make a fucking mockery of my goddamn hair appointment. So, what happened? Basically, it killed our sex life. I thought everyone was copulating like bunnies. End of the <laughs> world and all. Frankly, we haven't been having sex at all since the 11th. The fight just gave us a more concrete reason for not having sex. Wow. 
So, why'd you stop? I don't know. We talked about it a few days after the 11th and we didn't feel sexy. We felt, I don't know, alive, but kind of a sad alive. Do you, uh... Maybe one. So, were you smoking at Will's? No way. He'd <laughs> throw me out. It was really nice of him to take you in like that. Take me in? He dragged me to Brooklyn against my will. Because you were freaking out here. I was fine. He was really worried about you. Said um, you weren't making a lot of sense. I was just tired, that's all. Hey. Did you sleep together while you were staying out oh, there? Not sleep together, sleep together. Let me stay in the bed and all, but he's a perfect <laughs> gentleman. He just helped me until I fell asleep and then... Mm. So nothing happened? Nope. Wait. Are you thinking about... No, no, we are not getting back together. I don't know. Maybe that would be a good thing right Josie, now. Josie, please don't say Considering that. Considering all you've been through. I'm fine. You are now. Probably because Will got you out of here. I mean, can you imagine if you had been here alone? And that whole week after. Can we not get into this, please? Look, you know I'm not Will's biggest fan. But he took care of you. He was actually a mensch. What? A good guy. Ugh. Maybe you need a good guy right now. Or a good roommate. You think that Brit's gonna spoon with you and lullaby you to sleep? Let's not get crazy. Will can't even sing. Uh, analogy? Uh, not really, but... Just think about it. What? Will! No way. Hi, yeah, well, I'm, um... Uh... I'm calling about the apartment. Hello, um, Jeremy calling. I am afraid I have some dreadful news. I've been laid off from my job at the Flint Regis. Uh, there's been an utter lack of guests due to recent events. Thus, it looks like I'll be heading back to London rather prematurely. So, good luck with Edison and Jeff. Everything. I mean, in Manhattan. I thought about Brooklyn. I just don't hear from our green campaign. We talked this morning. Anyway, I have to finish up some TV spots today, but I should be done around five, so maybe I can pop over then. I'm sorry. If that works, call me on my cell or, or send me a text message to Jeff at Green2001.org. Thanks. Well, the ones who are, you know, talking to me, but you know, the ones that all. Hi, Jeff here. Come on up. Hey, Jeff Stone, nice to meet you. Hi, Eric. So this is the place? Yeah, uh, I can give you the... No, let's take a look around. So you're uh, working for Mark Green? That's right. I voted for him. Twice. Really? <laughs> On the 11th, too? After the second plane hit. That's, um... Well, you're a serious voter. Well, the place looks great. What's the rent again? Uh, it's... <clears throat> it's a thousand. Oh, what a steal. Five hundred each? Sorry, no, it's uh, it's a thousand each. Used to be five hundred each a while ago. But then... Let me guess. Giuliani. Yep. <laughs> Turned it around. Too much so. Now, I have to say, cleaning up the city is probably the one thing Giuliani did that was worthwhile. I grew up here. Back then, the place was a disaster. Where'd you live? My parents had a loft on Broadway. Wow, is it still there? Old Navy. But I can't complain. Soho's nice now. You know, there's things to do. You should have seen this place in the 70s. It was desolate. The city just sort of stopped at 14th Street and picked up south of Canal. In the 70s, everyone just fled. I've, I've been wondering if the 11th might be having the same effect. Do you think people are that freaked out? <laughs> Usually the first or second person I see will be writing me a check on the spot. You're like the... Tenth, and maybe everyone's feeling uncertain.
Have you been down there yet? No, definitely not. Last time I was there was about a month before the 11th. A couple weeks after I broke up with my ex, so a friend and I went on a shopping spree. Century 21? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think we were the only New Yorkers there. It was August, and the city was empty except for French tourists. It was a crummy day out, rainy and humid, so we just wandered around the underground shopping mall, got some summer clearance stuff at the J. Crew store, and I, I got this shirt there. <laughs> My last purchase. Uh, later, it, it cleared up, and so we got Krispy Kremes and just sat on that big, awful plaza, eating donuts and watching the hot French guys. God, it was such a nice, lame afternoon. Who'd have thought shopping at a mall could be so evocative? <clears throat> we had an event down there yesterday with Mark to get out the vote. God, that must've been creepy. There are tons of people, though. Not at the site, but, you know, as close as they can get. Broadway and Chamber Street. But I don't know how effective our event was. And those people weren't there to meet Mark or vote or anything. They're just there, looking. What is there to see? Not much. For 220 stories, there isn't a lot left. I mean, from where I was standing, I could see a pile of rubble about 50 feet. And it... oh, sorry. Could I talk about this, please? Sure. Sorry. Here I am babbling on like an idiot about a dumb photo op. It's your job. I'm sure the campaign's all about getting good images. I'm a photographer myself. Babbling on like an idiot about a dumb photo op. It's your job. I'm sure the campaign's all about getting good images. I'm a photographer myself. Used to be. But now... I think everybody's having doubts about their day jobs lately. It's more than doubts. I mean, a few days after everything happened, I seriously considered joining the Air Force. <laughs> really? Why is that so funny? It seems like a big leap from photography to the armed forces. Well, I guess it's pretty hysterical. After everything happened, all I wanted to do was get back here. Really? Why? All I kept thinking that day was I wanted to be in New York. I mean, I know DC had its, but this, this is home. Believe me, you should be glad you missed it. Yeah, maybe. But having grown up here, I felt like I had to... This is home. Believe me, you should be glad you missed it. Yeah, maybe. But having grown up here, I felt like I had But I just had to be here, you know? Back home. Don't you think... Being here now is just so depressing. Yeah, it can be, but, but still. At least I feel like I'm part of everything that's happening, for better or for worse. And that's what I wanted. To be here, doing something constructive, you know, keeping democracy rolling along. Jesus, that sounds corny, but that's what this was all about, wasn't it? The fact that this is my job, helping people get elected in New York even, it must drive them crazy. So it's the least I can do, right? I mean, oh. Oh, sorry. I gotta get back to the office. So when do you need to know? As soon as possible. I'm swamped in the next few days. How about we talk on Friday? Uh, I, I don't know if I can hold it. Well, if it's still available, let's talk then. All right. Uh, and don't forget to vote again. As long as I'm here, I'll be voting. Where are you going? Nowhere. Gallows humor. Right. Understandable these days. A necessity. And, and all I know is it said that you're looking for a roommate and a guy and all, but I was kind of wondering, you see, uh, me and my girlfriend, we're, we're trying to find something downtown, and 
Well, I kind of figured I'm okay, going to give it a shot. I just wanted really to see how the roommate hunt's cool. going. Sorry, so maybe you should try uh, regular roommates. Anyway, yes, I know it sounds kind of gay, but a friend of mine at work used them and found a decent roommate in a couple of days. And if that doesn't work, I can always move in. Okay, that was a joke. All right, maybe half joking. Hello, my name is Ivan. I see bedroom yesterday. I'm sorry, but it's too noisy for me. Hi, I Joey again from Rainbow Roommates. And you, you won't believe this. Remember the audition I had for the road company at Beauty and the Beast? I got the pause. Can you believe it? So I'm off. But really, you were a super sweet guy, and I'm sure you'll find the most amazing roommate. Bye. Eric? In the bathroom! Hey, it's me. Leave a message. You want me to get that? Buenos dias. Is Solano calling? No! Remember me? Listen. Eric? It's no mystery. The rain is overdue from 15. Um, I know you have roommate trouble. I'm sorry, but everyone has trouble this day. But your trouble is not my trouble, amigo. I got trouble my own, okay? Which I won't waste your time with. And you don't waste my time, okay? The first is coming up. I need the rent. You call me, or I come visit. Goodbye. It's still smoking! Yeah! It's like enough already. We get it, you know? But there it is, still smoking. I mean, can't they stop it? It stops, then they remove stuff, and oxygen gets in, and it starts up again. You still smoking? If it's still smoking, I'm still smoking. OK, that was beyond tasteless. Sorry, my sense of humor's a little off these days. Seriously? I don't know how you can still live down here. Maybe you should think about getting a place uptown, near us. 82nd Street, I get nosebleeds above 14. Sure, you still haven't found a roommate. And what about the landlord? Oh, he's fine. You didn't sound fine. Do you need me to lend you the money? No! He's always getting on my case like that, driving me, you know. It's a power play thing, like he's in charge. Eric, he is in charge. It's fine. I'm fine. Whoa. Fuck. Did you call that 800 number if yet? If I did, you think I wouldn't have told you? Jesus. Forget I asked. So what's in the bag? More food? You sounded a little desolate on the phone, so I thought I'd cheer you up. <laughs> Cupcakes. From Magnolia? Only the finest in refined sugar for you. You're so sweet. Have you talked to Will? Hmm? Every day. Wait a minute. You guys are talking every day now? On the phone. It's no big deal. Who calls who? I, I don't know. I guess she usually calls me. That's good! Josie, we're not getting back together. Did I say that? He's just worried about me finding a roommate, that's all. Still, his concern is sweet. He's just having ex-boyfriend guilt. I'm just having survivor's guilt. How about you? I'm having no sex guilt. You had another fight with David? Not exactly. So you discussed the whole sex thing? He did. At a party. Again? Becky had some people over for cocktails. And we were all standing around in the kitchen having a civil conversation about some New Yorker article about how everyone's relationships are either falling apart or coming together. 
And then my charming husband says, right out of the blue, Yeah, kinda like us not having had sex this month. Whoa. He had had a few drinks. That's no excuse. Stupid thing is he just won't come out and say it. Well, sounds like that's exactly what he did. No. The sex is more of a symptom. What's the problem, then? Kids. But I thought you decided... That we'd wait. Till he got promoted, till we can buy a house. Till we're both a little older so we don't fuck up our kids the way our parents fucked us up. And now he's changed his mind post everything. Suddenly his clock is ticking. Everyone's clock is ticking. Except mine. If anything, I'm more ambivalent about doing this now. Especially now. Really? Okay. First off, I don't want to have some tacky, patriotic 9-11 baby along with the rest of the city. I mean, the maternity wards are going to be packed come June. They'll probably be giving out flags instead of cigars. I mean, I love my country and everything, but this flag stuff everywhere, it's like living in Texas. <laughs> I mean, really, is this any world to bring a child into? You said you wanted to have kids eventually. Maybe this is eventually. This is now. Eventually is... Eventually. Josie. Give me one good reason why I should have a kid now. Go. Okay. Go! Okay! Jesus, Josie. Okay. You know how I'm always saying I want to be a fake uncle? Like someone calling me Uncle Eric when I'm not related at all, and then the kid being totally confused and wondering when he grows up why he thought this strange gay guy was his uncle when clearly there's no blood relation. And the only reason he was being called uncle was because his mom thought it would be cute to have her best friend be quasi-related to her baby. Ranting. Th well, that's a pretty good ranty reason, isn't it? It's pretty hallmark when you boil it down well, a bit. Well, I was trying to disguise it. That's the rant. Your rants are always meant to disguise something. What do you mean? Come on, Eric. Whenever you get all emotional about something, you try to cover it up with some crazily worded rant. I do? Oh my god. Especially in the last month, you've been rant central. It's why I've been worried about you. But I'm fine. You say that. <sighs> I don't know, I always have this sense that... that you've gone through all this crap, all of this incredibly sad stuff, and you don't seem sad. You seem... I don't know... a little further away. How much sleep did you get last night? I slept. Okay. Eric, when did you get up today? I don't know. Early. And when did you go to sleep? I don't know. Late? You stayed up again, pulling an anxiety all-nighter, smoking and drinking coffee and watching the news. Uh, I still don't get any channels. Ah, that's even worse, just sitting up by yourself. Uh, I listen to NPR. Public radio doesn't make it any better. It was just last night, really. What happened last night? I, uh, I heard some sirens. We live in Manhattan. There are always But sirens. now it's different. Nothing is going to happen, Eric. The worst is over. We're at war, Josie. With who? The Taliban? They don't even have an army. They have camels, and those probably don't even they work. They don't need an army. They're here in sleeper cells, waiting for the next signal to attack. OK, now you're not only being paranoid, but <sighs> yeah, you're missing okay. the Let point. Let the lecture begin. The point of terrorism is, is to, to inflict, inflict terror. terror. The only weapon they had was surprise, and they got their one great shot to do it. What was it that Dan Rather said? They lost the war the minute the second plane hit. That was it. Game Thank over. Thank you, Professor. But when I'm lying in bed at night and I hear all those sirens, I tend to think the worst. That's how it all began for me. All those sirens going off. A thousand sirens. It was infinite sirens to the nth degree. But can't you tell when it's just one siren, it's not It's never one siren. All right, there's still a difference between three sirens and 3,000 sirens. Not at 3.30 in the morning. Oh! You know what the problem is? Um, terrorism? Wasn't Will going to take the dresser? He thinks it's ugly. Look. Once you get this out and get a new roommate, I'm sure you'll feel a lot better instantly. The trick now is actually getting the roommate. There's no trick. And now that things are getting back to normal... Oh, 
Face it, Josie, things are not getting back to normal. They can't. That's bullshit. People are going on with their lives. Maybe above 14th Street. And don't give me your whole downtown DMZ ranch. You act like 14th Street is the friggin' Berlin Wall. Oh, please! People up there have no idea. None! Okay, now you're getting hysterical again. Have you seen things getting back to normal down here? Have you? Of course. Are you kidding? Have you noticed the missing flyers everywhere? Or, or the candles in front of all the fire stations? Or how about the heavily armed stormtroopers on every corner? Give me one back to normal example. Go. Go! Okay. Yesterday, I was coming out of the Mercer Hotel when this supermodel stole the cab right out from under me. What did you do? I called her a fashionista cunt. But did she say anything back? Who is that at 11.30 at night? Is it Will? Definitely not. What the hell is the Triple X Pony? Video bookstore on West Street. A porn store? A full service gay porn store. They still have those? <laughs> Hello? Yes. Yes. Oh, hi, Alex. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Tonight? Um, uh, okay. It's in Soho. 12 o'clock, okay, sounds good. See you then. Uh, who the hell is Alex? Guy coming to see the apartment. Oh. Guy coming to see the apartment. Try freaky horn fiends coming over to rape you. I talked to him this afternoon, he wants to see the place. At midnight? It's not like I can afford to turn anyone away. You know what? Sometimes caller ID is more than anyone needs to know. <laughs> well, thanks for the cupcakes and cheer. Wait, I'm leaving? Yeah, he's gonna be here in like 10 minutes. But can't I meet him? Josie. All right, but don't let him bargain you down. Even if he offers me his body? Maybe I should stay. Good night, Josie. Why can't I stay? Because you don't live here. Call me tomorrow, I want to know everything. It's not a date, it's a potential roommate. Uh, let's hope so. Good night, and get home safe. You never used to say that before. Don't take the subway. Yeah? It's Alex. Uh, okay, come on up, third floor. Hi. Hey. Uh, is it too late? Oh, no, no. It's fine. You're, uh, fine. Uh, I mean, come on in. So Sorry the... that... Sorry I'm so late. It's okay. I'm a bit of a night owl lately. So, um... What's keeping you up tonight? Oh, um... I... Just working late. Great. Where do you work? I'm at Goldman. In the International Bond Division. Wow. Sounds intriguing. Bond, international bond. <laughs> no, it's just boring numbers crunching stuff, but it pays well. That's the suit. Oh, this. I got it at Century 21. Wow, that place is great. Was great, but I heard it pretty much survived, which is amazing, being right across the street. I used to go there all the time. And the mall, too. I got this shirt there, the J. Crew store. God, it must be a mess down there. I can't even imagine. So, where's the room? Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. This thing is, um... It's okay. Just, um... Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Lots of light during the day. <laughs> it's a nice view. Uh, used to be. 
My old roommate said I should put WTC View in the ad. <laughs> he just moved here from Ohio and he couldn't believe the view. You see Empire State View all the time and has some major value, but WTC View doesn't mean a thing. Di didn't mean a... <clears throat> but, you know, he just kept saying I should put that in the ad. He thought it'd be this big selling point, you know, WTC View. <laughs> it's not something to joke about. Oh, I, uh... Sorry. So, what's the deal with this stuff? Uh, well, my ex is gonna take that. Oh, I'm sorry. You actually want the dresser? No, about the ex. When did you break up? Uh, a couple months ago. I just broke up with my boyfriend, too. Wow. When did you guys break up? A couple weeks ago. Well, at least you can blame it on Bin Laden. <laughs> That's really not very funny. I, I meant to say that everything that's happening now is really affecting people's relationships. You know, people are doing some pretty strange things. I mean, my best friend isn't sleeping with her husband. Uh, people are having all day one night stands. Uh, Ex-boyfriends are sleeping together. What? I can't believe we're talking about this sort well, of stuff. Well, we could talk about the Yankees. They're a huge distraction for everybody. All right, all right. You see, my ex wanted us to move in together after the 11th. I didn't, so that was it, and we broke up. Funny, that's why we broke up, too. I mean, we'd only been going out a year and a half. I thought that moving in at that point was way too soon. Me, too. Maybe after two years, maybe. Right, and then with everything that's been going on recently, my life is totally changed. My priorities are different. Everything is so upside down, you know? Oh, I know. And I can't just ignore that and pretend to go on like nothing's happened. Having trouble getting back to normal. Exactly. <laughs> uh -oh. What? Does that sound like a lot of sirens to you? I don't know. What are you doing? I just want to see what's going on. How about 1010 10 wins? In an emergency, I always go for a pop station. If it's something really serious, they'll interrupt programming, like on the 11th. If not, Brittany. Still, that sounds like a lot of sirens. When I first moved here, I'd call home, and my parents were always like, turn off the TV while you're on the phone. And I was like, that's not the TV, Mom. It's the East Village. Hey, have you heard the planes? Huh? The F-15s? They've got them on constant patrol over the city. I heard them Sunday around 4 in the morning. Shook my bed, the sound was so loud. And I don't understand why they're flying over ground zero. I think they're a little late, you know? I did it again. I'm sorry. It's just... I... It... The whole thing, it... <laughs> so, where were you? I was there. There? You mean right there? I was in Tower One. Oh my god, so how did, what happened? I had no idea what was going on. Uh, how's that possible? I had an early meeting that morning. The meeting ended at around a quarter of nine and... That's right when the... I was in the sky lobby and everybody was getting off the elevators going to work. So I got in an empty elevator and hit the lobby button. And I'm just standing there, whistling, looking at my feet, you know, elevator stuff. Then suddenly, the whole thing comes to a stop, and there's this huge whoosh of air, then a low rumbling sound, and the lights and everything flicker off for a minute, but then come back on. I tried to open the doors, but they were stuck. And then I heard some voices coming from the speaker, but it was all jumbled. Then there was another rumbling sound. Not as big. After that, I was beginning to think this is probably pretty serious, but still, I don't know what's going on. A voice comes on the speaker that I can finally understand and says that there's been a fire and that someone's coming to get me. So I just stand there waiting. 
So I wait and wait and wait. No one comes. All I can see is a sliver of dusty light through the doors, and I think maybe I should try to open them again. So I did, and they open. <laughs> Just like that. I couldn't believe it, but all that time I was in the lobby on the ground floor. So I walk out and look around, and all the windows are smashed, and there's all this smoke. But there are no people. I mean, no one is around. So I walk out into the plaza, and there's just all this... luggage. Suitcases that are open, and garment bags, and business clothes, and shoes. So many pairs of shoes. And I hear this huge bang behind me, and about 20 feet away is what I guess is a body, not because it looks like one, but because of all the blood. So I look up to see two more coming down, holding up these tablecloths as makeshift parachutes that would work for a few seconds, then don't. At that point, I knew I should run, but with all this carnage and things falling, I don't know where to go. I, I froze. Then out of nowhere, I feel something that is on my wrist, something that is burning hot. I think that I'm on fire for a minute, that some piece of something's hit me. But I turn around, and there's this huge fireman grabbing me by the wrist, and he starts running, dragging me behind him. I try to slow down and turn around and see exactly what the hell what was going on, but the fireman yells, don't turn around, and hearing that, I just get shivers all over my body. So we're just booking down Fulton over to West Street, and even though we're running, I feel cold all of a sudden. The only part of my body that's warm is my wrist where he's holding me, and it is really starting to hurt. Finally, we get to the river where all these fireboats are parked, and I hear this enormous crack, like a clap of thunder, and I turn around to see it falling coming down into this insane cloud that starts barreling towards us. The fireman just about throws me on the fireboat, but the cloud stops before it gets to us. So I'm sitting in the fireboat. I'm just shaking. I'm so cold. And a nurse comes up to me, staring at me in shock, and asks if I'm hurt. And I look at my pants, and there is all this blood. But it's not mine. It's from the plaza. So she checks me out, and I'm not hurt at all. Not a scratch. All I had was this big bruise on my wrist from the fireman, from his grip. That's all. That's... that's just... Yeah, you got me talking too much about it. To be there to see all that, that must have been horrible. It was, but also... I don't know. In a weird way, I think I'm lucky to have even gone through the whole thing, because as awful as it all was, it's also been the most incredible thing, too. Life's suddenly more... vivid. And I notice things I never noticed before. Like, every time I get on the subway now, it's so cool. I get on the train, and it's like... There's so much life in one car. People flirting with each other and reading great books for the first time and totally asleep because they've worked a 12-hour shift. And on top of the people, there's all these bizarre little things going on too. Did you know that the two train makes this noise like the opening strains of Somewhere from West Side Story? Right as it's pulling out of the station, as the engine starts up, it makes the notes of the song. Oh, God, you probably think I'm crazy. But you know what? I don't care. I don't care anymore. This may sound strange, but despite everything that's happened, the world is a pretty incredible place these days, and now I'm just trying to figure it out. Why I'm still here. There's got to be some reason why I'm here. Maybe this is it.
Oh, you mean like this here, to rent this room? Well, who knows? Maybe you're right. So, your ex still hasn't gotten his stuff? N no, it's my roommate's. Oh, but your roommate's moved out, right? Oh, yeah, he's gone. Must have left in a hurry. Actually, he was gonna move out on the 15th, but then... Wait, I thought you said he was gone. Y yeah. He's, uh, really just gone. You mean he? Well, yeah. Oh, my god. He was all ready to move out on the 15th, had most of his stuff packed up and ready to go, and then I'm sorry, I... So, where was he? Tower one. Oh, man. I'm so sorry, Eric. You don't have to talk about this if you don't. No, it's OK. Uh, <laughs> I haven't really been talking about it lately, and everyone's kind of scared to bring it up around me. Because I, I, I sort of lost it for a while, and couldn't really deal with everything that was going on. I mean, by the end of that day, I was just a wreck. Were you good friends with this guy? No, nope. not really. Just roommates. He's only living here a few months. He was doing temp work down there. So he was planning on moving out already? Uh, a friend of his, this uh, girl he went to college with, was moving to the city. They were in this sort of funky band together, the Haggard. He said they were sort of B-52s-ish. He kept telling me that he was the Fred and she was the Kate. <laughs> anyway, um, she was moving up here, and they needed a place to live in and as well as rehearse in, and he found this enormous loft for the mountain bushwick. I told him it was crazy to go all the way out there. I mean, Brooklyn, right? <laughs> but he was so excited about it. Excited to be rehearsing with the band again. They already had their first gig lined up. It was going to be some dive in Williamsburg. <laughs> On the 22nd. Hey, are you... <clears throat> God, it's so stupid that I should be... I barely knew him. When he was living here, we hardly ever even saw each other. We were on such different schedules. Everyone used to joke that he was my imaginary roommate, that I'd made him up, but he was a great roommate. Just cleaning stuff around the apartment, stuff I never even r realized was dirty. I'd come home and voila, everything would <laughs> smell like lemons. It was just so nice. Come on, you seem like a nice guy. Oh, right. You barely know me. Still, you don't seem like some terrible person. Gee, thanks. That's not what I... You seem nice. That's all I'm saying. Why don't I get going and I'll... Uh, actually, um... Can you... stay for a bit? Well... Uh, if you don't want to, it's fine. Uh, it's just late, and... No, it's okay. Uh, it's just that lately I've been feeling so down. And you, you just seem to have this positive thing going on, which is great. I feel so not positive lately. 
everything that happened just sort of weighs on me, weighs me down and makes me feel like, do you really think that I'm a nice guy? You don't have to. No, it's okay. Really? Okay. What's up? I haven't slept with someone since Will and I broke up. Mm -hmm. So I'm the first. Yeah. First, uh, <laughs> I thought when I broke up with Will I was gonna go crazy or something, you know, sleeping with all these hot guys. A freedom field day. But nothing happened. Nothing? No, suddenly it was like no one was even looking at me, like I had the gay scarlet letter or broken up on my chest. I don't know. Maybe it's not what you really wanted. I don't want that at all, right? That's part of the reason why I broke up with Will in the first place, because I was feeling too trapped and constrained and scared, you know, that this was it. That I was an adult in a relationship that had lasted for more than a few months. I thought that by now everything would be settled and perfect and cozy. Turned out to be just the opposite. My birthday was in May, and that's when Will and I started fighting and really had trouble getting steady work. And then my old roommate moved out because he couldn't afford the rent anymore. And then Stephen moved in, which was actually great until Get to bed. Mm. I won't be able to sleep. 
Nightmares? <laughs> Hardly. People keep asking, are you having nightmares? Are you having nightmares? When I sleep, it's just this great empty blackness. When life is this sort of daymare. Sleep is a blessing, total holiday from reality. So why can't you sleep then? I can sleep. It's getting to sleep, that's the problem. I just lie there in bed and close my eyes and think about the 11th. Everything I saw that day over and over again on a loop. Then a truck will backfire and I'll be up checking the news and then before you know it, sunrise and traffic picks up and it's too noisy to sleep and I just give up. You know, not sleeping can really screw with your head. <laughs> Maybe that's why you had that outburst before. Oh, that. I have one of those every day. <laughs> it's just usually when no one's around. You were just in the right place at the right time. It's really not very funny. I mean, you were seriously losing it there before. Maybe you should get some help. They have this 800 number. Oh, I've heard about the number. I mean, it's been a big help for me. Uh, I'm sure it's great for you and other victims and people who really knew people who died. Like your roommate. So, was there a funeral? Just a memorial service down in Florida where his parents live. Did you meet them? No. Just his uh, girlfriend. Well, uh, girlfriend, the one he was in the band with. She came by and got most of his stuff. God, that was bad enough. I can't even imagine what his parents must be going through. My parents were completely freaked out by all of this, and I lived. I know. On the 11th, I was managing a sort of thin veneer of sanity, and then Will came over. And he acted surprised that I was alive, and that was it. I was gone. What do you mean? Uh, I didn't think I was ever gonna stop crying. Like tonight? Uh, worse, actually. Is that possible? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. It was terrible. I went through half a roll of paper towels. And Will just held me and handed me new paper towels and then during an emotional lull said that he was taking me to Brooklyn whether I wanted to go or not. Wow. He sounds like a great guy. Hmm. He has his moments. Sounds like you care about him still. Maybe that's why you were crying so much. I don't know. Complicated. Want to join me? And watch you sleep? No, we'll both sleep together. Mm. I'll hold you and help you sleep. It'll be, you know, cozy. Mm. I'll just keep you awake, tossing and talking and being generally annoying. You're not annoying. You're cute. <laughs> That's why I kissed you in the first place. Not to get me to stop crying? No. Oh. Wait a sec. What? Fifteens. Maybe something's going on. Like what? Routine patrol. <laughs> Not unless the DJ had a strange sense of humor.
breathe. Yeah. But I can't breathe. I'm sorry. <sighs> Do you, uh... No. Thanks. Trying to quit. You know... Smoking will keep you up all night. Nicotine is a total stimulant. Think I'm gonna get any sick with the Air Force on patrol? Guess not. What are you doing? I'm gonna head out, Ben. You can stay here, sleep in, you can have the whole bed to yourself. I'll make sure you get up, I'll set my alarm. No, thanks. I gotta go home and pick up some papers before I go into the office. Where are you staying now, anyway? I'm at my parents' house, way out in Queens. Wow. It's just for a few weeks till I find a share, something more affordable. I wanna save up some money, get back to school maybe, do something a little bit more interesting with my life other than international bonds. Sounds like a plan. Uh, uh, Alex? Yeah? Um, thanks for um, staying with me when I was... Sure. I just, uh, I really needed... And um, I just... Uh, thanks. Take care, Eric. And get some sleep. but you're not there. I was gonna stop by the apartment and take a look at that dresser that I don't want. You know, I'm a little concerned you haven't called me back. So call me, okay? Hey, it's Max. Send me an email. I heard about the share you've got from Rainbow Roommates and it sounds totally cool and perfect and awesome because I'm in school like right nearby and I need a place to Okay. Like, like yesterday. So even. what is the oh, deal with screening calls? Yeah, right, right. Thanks, Come man. on, I wanna know what happened with that porn guy. I know I don't even know him, but look, you don't want some pervert as a roommate. I mean, gay is one thing, but, uh, that was a joke. But you're not fucking picking up to laugh at it. Call me Eric. Hi, Jeff here. Thanks for showing me your place earlier this week. Unfortunately, we got some new polling in today, which was really bad, and I just found out that I'm going to be laid off from the Green campaign. They're having another change in strategy, and I'm not part of the change, which sucks. So I'm going back to Washington. You know, it's really too bad because it's a great apartment. And you seem like a Fuck. decent, normal guy. Fuck! Anyway. Fuck! Remember to vote for green. Again. Okay. Shut up up there! Jesus! Oh. Go away! What? Hi, it's Max. I called from Rainbow. All right, all right. Rainbow fucking roommates. Such a friggin' hell, such munchkins dancing around some goddamn real estate pot of gold. Hey, what's up? Just, um, packing up some boxes. Ugh, making room for me, huh? <laughs> Great place. <laughs> it's 
That's a nice view. Not smoking today? You smoke? Yeah, I smoke. Well, you should really quit, man. There's rat poison in those things. I saw it on MTV. So what are you, like a freshman or something? Just started my junior year at NYU. I went to NYU. What'd you study? Photography. Oh, cool. I love photography. <laughs> Does anyone hate photography? You know, I've been thinking about changing my major. Be pretty cool, you know? I've always liked pictures. There's this gallery down on Spring Street that has all these pictures up from the 11th. Snapshots that people took. Hey, did you take any pictures on the 11th? Uh, no. I got some insane shots on my digital camera. I'll have to show them to you. No, thanks. And then later that day, me and my roommates, we went down to Union Square, and we were lighting candles and meditating. It was pretty intense. Oh, so you were part of that whole 60s loving thing. Yeah, that's a bit harsh. What, it was a bunch of students whose classes were canceled and having better to do, right? They did cancel class, but... Exactly. <laughs> Why doesn't anyone ever take students seriously around here? It's like just because we're young, our opinion is retarded or something. It didn't used to be like this. Back in the 60s, people listened to students. They stopped a war, ended discrimination, changed everything. And now people look at students and they're like, well, what do they have to say? I think we have a lot to say. No more war and tons more peace. That's just great. It is great. It could be. But Bush wants our pain to be a cry for revenge. A little revenge could be a good thing right now. You're not serious, are you? Look, I wouldn't mind kicking someone's ass for this, okay? You have a lot of rage, you know that, man? Thousands of people are dead, and someone needs their ass kicked for that. That's not so terrible. It's justice, simple justice. That's just what Osama thought. What? He saw his actions as justice for thousands who have been oppressed and killed by Western imperialism in the Middle East. Your views are really very sweet, Max. But in the real world, peace is an ideal. It's not a way of life. Not if you don't think so. No. Oh. It all starts with one person, you know? So you really think that you and your friends gathering together in Union Square is going to cause an about face in US foreign policy? Maybe not tomorrow, but over time. Well, that's, that's just great. You know, you must be in some sort of serious post-everything denial because that's, that's just crazy. Well, I'd rather be crazy than cynical. I'm not cynical, I'm realistic. Realistic would be realizing your power to change things. Are you in some sort of cult? <laughs> no way, man. Okay, are you from California? Nope, Oregon. Oh, where are you going? Uh, I am sorry, Max, I don't think this is gonna work out. <clears throat> what do you mean? The apartment thing? I, I just think I need someone closer to my own uh, experiences. What do you mean? Someone just <clears throat> more like... Uh... Not a student. Look, there's tons of other apartments and tons of other students too. I'm sure you'll find someone that's, you know, more compatible. Man, I, I should have kept my mouth shut about that peace stuff. Drives my roommates crazy. Uh, if you have roommates, why are you looking for an apartment? They're all leaving. Our suite's breaking up and they're heading home. Leaving the city and everything. Right in the middle of the semester? Yeah. People's parents are panicked and they're just taking them out. Some friends of mine are just freaking out on their own. I mean, that day was just so insane. <laughs> Seeing the whole thing live. Not on TV. Yeah, well, we all saw it and... I mean, I was walking down 6th Avenue. Head to my nine o'clock, and the first plane buzzed right over my head. And I looked up because it was so loud, and I knew something was totally wrong. And I watched it, and I followed it, and it went right into the Trade Center. And that thing had flown right over my head. This is kind of weird, but last summer I went to see this movie, Pearl Harbor, with a couple of friends of mine. And it was totally stupid, like Ben Affleck is some flying ace, right? Like, Give me a break. But there's this one scene where these Japanese planes are flying past a bunch of kids playing baseball. And I remember thinking how intense that must have been to be one of those kids, to see history flying right over your head, you know? And when I was watching it, I was thinking to myself, damn, 
nothing that serious or historical is ever going to happen to me. And then two months later, there I am on 6th Avenue, looking up. And now I feel like I almost wished for something like that to happen. I mean, I, I know I didn't really, but it's what I wanted in a way, to be part of history. And now I'm in it all the way. Have you thought about leaving too? Oh yeah. My parents tried to get me to come home on a freaking bus <laughs> to Oregon. Union Square changed your mind? No, it was later. When classes started up on the 17th, a bunch of kids went to tell my psych teacher that it was gonna be their last day of class, that they were leaving because of their folks. And our professor got buried down about it. And he said that he understood our parents' concern, but he also said something really interesting. We came here because we wanted to be in New York. We desired this New York experience. Craved it almost. And now he said, New York needed us. I was like, wow, guy's got a point. So you stayed. Yeah, but my roommates are gone and now I'm sort of stuck. I can't do university housing and I can't afford my own place. Well, you probably can't afford this place then either. How much is it? It's, uh, it's 1200 a month. Whoa, seriously? Uh, yeah. That's a total deal, man. What? I was expecting like 1500. Oh. That's what it is uh, on campus. And NYU is like a total rip. Um, That'd be perfect. I could still walk from here. I could think Whoa. What the hell? The power blow? That's weird. The power never goes out here, not even in the summer. Maybe something's going on. I read online somewhere that they're having some problems with the power downtown. A substation or something got destroyed on the 11th. Hey, do you have a Walkman or anything? Uh, no. Not on me. You want to listen to some music? No, I want to check the news. I think something's going on. Oh no. How many sirens is that? I don't know. Maybe two or three? I think mean, something's going on. What do you mean? That sounds like a lot of sirens. Doesn't it? I don't think it's anything to worry about. Oh my god, the traffic lights are out. Yeah. Power must be out in the whole neighborhood. We cut the traffic lights. Oh my god, it's happening again. We need to do something. Hey, relax. It's just the power. No, no, you don't understand. This is it. It's probably a chemical attack, but they've, they've cut the power, so no one can get the news on the radio. No one knows what's going on. So we're all going to run outside and inhale the stuff and be dead within a few minutes. Hey, I think you should sit down for a minute. I seriously don't think anything's wrong. Uh, are you listening to those sirens? Yeah, it's probably the police. They're coming to help with the traffic. It's fine. No, 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 it's too many sirens. Oh, I'm gonna call Will. Who's Will? Hey, easy there. Phone's dead. Cause the power's out. I cut it. This is it. Look, I think you're having some kind of panic thing. No, I'm not panicking. This is it. This is for real. I talked about this dead. in the dorm last week. You just have to sit down. Tell me what you think I'm dead. Think dead. Oh, oh peace he thing. works uptown. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's where the cell phone is. Probably attacking like Midtown right oh, now. Oh, 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 Will, wait. Do you have a cell phone? Are you going to relax if I give it to you? Yeah. Looks like everything's fine. It's probably some electrical problem. Oh, the police are directing traffic. Hey, man, that's my phone. Circuits are busy. Yeah, I've got crap service. This is just like before. All the circuits were busy. I couldn't get through. It's happening again, but this time it's going to be even worse. This time. Oh. Oh, my shirt. Get another shirt. It was from J. Crew. It was 
J. Crew's like everywhere. No, I bought it at J. Crew in the mall. <sighs> yeah, still, it's okay. You can get a new one. No, that J. Crew is gone. It was the one at the trade center. It's the last thing that I bought there. And now it's. Oh my god. Now it's ruined. Come on. It's just a shirt. It was just the power. No big deal. <laughs> hey, it's fine. <laughs> See? <laughs> Everything's fine. Really. Uh, I'm not fine. <laughs> 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 Just wanted to let you know I got most of the stuff this morning with the moving guys. Also, I talked to Josie and she's going to get there around one after her doctor's appointment and she'll help with anything that's left. Then I'll come by with the car after work. So, hey, call me if it's there's Max. any. Uh, I got your message need... and that's totally cool about me. the apartment. Okay. I talked to Carlos you. too Bye. and he seemed pretty nice. Uh, for a landlord, I guess. Oh, and and Diaz, too. this is your former landlord calling. So, I meet this Max. He seemed too young and no landlord calling. So, I meet this Max. He seemed too young and no... Goodbye. So, how's it going? Good. Good. You feel okay? Josie. What? You don't have to talk to me like that. Like what? Like I'm Blanche Dubois or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, Blanche, at least you look good all dressed up. You even shaved, too. I had to. <laughs> well said I was one step away from looking like a homeless person. Oh, isn't that sweet? Yeah. He has a way with a compliment sometimes. So, how are things over in Brooklyn? Quiet. That's the suburbs for you. Yeah. But you feel better. Yeah. A lot better. Good. And the 800 number? I pretty much memorized it. That's great, Eric, really. Ugh. Can't believe I'm leaving. After almost 10 years. Makes me feel like a loser. What? This is exactly what they wanted, to scare me into moving out of here. <laughs> oh, it's funny, it's just like what you said, the point of terrorism. Oh, now you're listening to what I said. But I fell into that trap, they made me scared. Trap? Eric, they killed your roommate, you have a right to be fucking terrified. There is nothing wrong with that. But still, I... leaving here after all this, almost a decade. All right. Let's can the fake nostalgia. Oh, How many times did I hear you complain about the lack of heat in the winter? The lack of air conditioning in the summer? Locks that sometimes work? Roaches the size of my purse? All right. I get it. But it was my home. 
Well, now you got a new home with central air and a front door that locks. Uh, staying at Will's is temporary. Really? Really. You get everything together, my work and emotional stuff, and then decide once I can decide. Sure, when you're, uh, thinking clearly. I'm not gonna stay with him until he gets sick of me and kicks me out or anything. He is not gonna get sick of you, Eric. I know, that can be pretty difficult these days. He did a pretty good job on the 11th. And this weekend, too. I know I never say this, but I was probably 100% wrong about him when you two broke up. Josie. 100% wrong? Maybe you need to call that 800 number. So, what's this mysterious doctor's appointment Will mentioned? Oh, that it's nothing big, really. Josie, you never go to the doctor. What's up? Well, I'm pregnant. What? You are? Jesus, Eric, I am a woman. It happens. But you weren't even, uh, even having sex. And David... All right. I've been pregnant for a while. You... You have? I missed my period a couple days after the 11th, and I thought I was in shock or something. But then I couldn't keep down my morning latte, so I got one of those kits at Dwayne Reed. And the writing was on the stick, as they say. Wait a minute. So you were actually pregnant when David was wanting to uh, procreate? Well, yeah. Why didn't you tell him? Because of what was going on in the world. I mean, the idea of bringing a child into this insanity. Reading all these awful stories about mothers who lost their kids. You know, the orchard things. Every day, there are at least three inconsolable mothers. The idea of having a kid only for something like that to happen. Just couldn't bear it. Wow. So you're really pregnant? Yep. I went to the doctor today to break the good news to her. And? She was thrilled. And you? I guess I am pretty excited. <laughs> Does mean I get to be a fake uncle and everything? Yeah. But this kid is not going to call you Uncle Mame. That is just Aww. retarded, OK? Come here. Come here. Ugh. What? We never used to hug before. That's because we were New Yorkers. And what are we now? Is that Will already? Probably. He's never one to be late. Yeah. Hi, it's me, honey. Hi, uh, don't call me honey. Sorry, sweetie. Uh, okay. We'll be down in a minute. Smoking? Yeah. It's kind of white today. Wispy almost. Eric? You okay? I was listening to NPR last night at Will's. And they did this really long piece about the beginnings of the Trade Center. Very NPR right to talk about that while everyone else is talking about the destruction of it. Did you know they finished construction the year we were born? I remember coming up to visit my aunt out in Brooklyn. 
And you could see it from her place on State Street. I was obsessed. I kept asking, when can we go to the top? So when the observation deck finally opened, we all took the train downtown and we took the elevator all the way up. And it was a major disappointment. It, it was? The top deck was closed. Too windy. <laughs> Try to convince my aunt they should let us up anyway, that we'd be fine as long as she held my hand, we wouldn't go flying off the top or anything. The view from inside was okay, but I wanted to be up on the roof. Top of the world, I kept calling it. It was an amazing view. Standing up there with just the sound of the wind. Couldn't hear any of the street noises that high up, just the wind. If it was a clear enough day, you could see the curvature of the earth. <laughs> that was something. Come on, Will's waiting. Can I, uh, I'll be down in a minute. Sure. But if it's more than a minute, I'm calling 911. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks, Josie. For what? For, uh, being Josie. You've got one minute.
close And I first remember I was calling your name Oh, your name 